Commit yourself unto the Lord. And give him thanks for giving you this privilege to be in his presence and to learn these things. Wisdom has invited the youth and is dealing well with them. Wisdom has invited you and is dealing well with you. Wisdom is Jesus. Almighty Father, we bless and worship you this day. I'm so grateful because you assembled these youths from different parts of the world to teach them wisdom, to give them understanding, to transform them so you might use them for end time service. I'm grateful, Father. Now this message is coming to them. I'm asking divine, they will understand. They will receive the message. They shall be guided by the message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm taking the message. Youth, watch against false doctrines and corrupt preachers. Can we repeat that? Youth, watch against false doctrines and corrupt preachers. Can you say it? In the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, I read verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it a child is ignorant ignorant of vital information of life ignorant of the way ignorant of the truth ignorant of living of the life so god is saying train him up teach him the way teach him the truth teach him how to live teach him about life when as he grows up he will adhere to it and in his old age he will be directed by it as it is to a natural child so it is with christian children christian youths newborn again tell them about the way of Christianity, the truth of Christianity, the life of Christianity. As they grow up in Christ, they will be guided by it. That is why you are here. Young Christians are like signed checks with blank space 
for the amount to be withdrawn to be written. He that finds that check is signed already. Write what you desire to remove from the bank, to withdraw from the bank, and take it to the bank. So that is how it is. God is the one making this revelation to mankind. That the young minds, as you are, need to be told what to do, how to live, what not to do, what to avoid, to guide your life to success. In fact, they are like plain sheets any writer can use and write what he wants. Their hearts are plain sheets. You can draw the diagram you have in your mind on their plain hearts. You can write what you want over their plain hearts. So, many youths have been corrupted by corrupt preachers. Who, can, who saw them as ignorant people and put their own design on them, put their own interest on, in them, and spoiled them. Many people have given different approaches to youths and have confused them. And now it, our society is crying because of young men and women who came up with bad training and are affecting the world negatively. Apart from that, the, the, the natural world, the social world, we also have the Christian world. The decay we are seeing in Christianity today comes from young minds that were taught wrongly. Were given wrong approach to life concerning the teachings of Christianity. And they went off and are sacrificing to idols today. Are worshipping demons. Are faking many things in the name of Jesus today. Why? They were not trained. But thank God. Everybody said, thank God I am here. Say it again. Yes, as a youth, you must appreciate so much that you are in this conference. Holiness, revival, movement worldwide. Here, we are going to open your eyes to evil doctrines that are being taught in Christianity that are destroying people, sending them to, to hell. But who are these corrupt preachers? Who are the corrupt preachers? Identifying corrupt preachers. That's what I want to let you know. Identifying corrupt preachers. How do you identify them? They are number one, ignorant men. They don't know about God. They don't know the word of God. They don't know Jesus. Yet, they attempt to do great things. They go to start churches. They go to start assemblies. They, they make themselves prophets and give themselves titles. Chief apostles. Apostles. Right apostles. Reverends. Bishop. Archbishop. Senior bishop. Pastor. Senior pastor. Whatever they give various titles to themselves, but they are ignorant people who don't know God, neither the word of God, and as a result, they go in and mislead people. See what the Bible says in the book of Second Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him have written unto you as also in all his epistles 
speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction many people who are church founders are destroyers because they don't know God they don't know the word of God see here Peter said the writings of brother Paul apostle Paul some of them are difficult and these ignorant people unlearned people sinful preachers sinful leaders go into them and give them the interpretations they want and as a result are leading people to destruction they themselves are to be destroyed and they are agents of destruction beware youths many churches are there for destruction of humanity their pastors and ministers are corrupt they don't know him again how do we know these evil people they are sinful men they are sinful men look at it in the book of matthew chapter 12 i read verse 33 to 35 matthew chapter 12 verse 33 to 35 either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt for the tree is known by his fruit O generation of vipers how can ye being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure bring it forth evil things that's what the lord is saying oh generation of vipers snakes how can you preach the correct doctrine when you are immoral when you are in witchcraft when you are in occultism how can you how can you tell the truth your conscience will not allow it your hypocrisy will stop on the way generation of vipers so you can see some preachers are snakes they are vipers if they bite you you won't survive except you run quickly to jesus to handle your case thank god you have run here now otherwise they're very deadly generation of vipers why are they telling you false things corrupt things is because they themselves are corrupt their hearts are corrupt their lives are corrupt so how would they not be corrupt they will speak corrupt things a, a man was speaking to a lady a minister of the gospel was speaking to a lady that he wanted to commit immorality with he said come i want to put anointing into you see how corrupt corrupt language corrupt heart and it's using holy word the lord will deal with them you have already heard about the judgment of god the Lord will deal with them. How can the one that is looking for your money, all his mind is money, preach anything? I heard of a preacher that went to Madiguri and he said, well, I didn't come here to preach. I come here to rest. I've come here to raise money. Yes. A man must speak according to his nature. They are corrupt people, evil, wickedness. I heard of another person that came to a particular place gather christians there and began to lay hand upon them that they should be healed they should receive the holy ghost and one of them demon appeared to him in the night how they are the one going about spreading demons they are charged they, are, they want to release demons on people in the name of laying hands don't allow any man to lay hands suddenly upon you a man you don't know him a man whose ministry is not proved a man whose life you have never proved never should lay hand upon you don't because of sickness go and carry demons so that's the problem again how do we know these corrupt people they are traditional men in the book of mark, uh, of mark chapter 7 verse 6 to verse 9 mark 7 verse 6 
to verse 9. They are men of traditions. They have left the word of God. Verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, These people honored me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own traditions. These ones go to Bible school. They go to Bible colleges. What do they go to learn there? They go to learn the traditions of their fathers. The same corrupt things their fathers have, were, have been doing, they put them in writing and send them to schools for them to go and learn there and come back and do the same corrupt thing. They come to do the same corrupt thing. Baptize in the same corrupt way. Do everything the same way. Oh, our baptism we will throw water on your face. In our baptism, we will pour it upon your head. And in our baptism, it is sand. We're not using water. We're using sand. We will pour sand upon you. So these are corrupt people. They have left the world. They are going on tradition of their fathers. They don't want to change. All the light of the gospel that has come in our day, they reject it. We don't want it. We don't want speaking in tongues. No, we don't want healing. We don't want miracle. We don't know. Our fathers never do that, did that. So we don't want tradition of your fathers. Even science improves upon itself. The science, what science knew yesterday is different from what it what is the scientists know today because of more finding more revelations more understanding so there is the understanding of the word of god which your parents didn't know because their education was too small to know it did they know how to speak english did they know how to read is it not traditional is it the native language they were using and so they didn't understand and some of the white men that brought the gospel to them were ignorant men themselves they are they came out of ignorance their great father great grandfather were all ignorant people and now the truth has come because the lord has sent the damnation of man and has brought the truth they said no they don't want to change no what we have been doing we will continue to do what we have been doing corrupt corrupt people traditional minded preachers again greed of men i'm telling you what makes these people corrupt greed look at it in the book of titus chapter 1 verse 10 and 11 titus chapter 1 verse 10 and 11 for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers especially they of the circumcision whose mouths must be stopped who subvert whole houses teaching things which they ought not for filthy locals sake for money's sake when they come to you say the lord sent me that lord they're talking about is money that money sent them with a gospel with a message for you can money give you a message he, they came for a mess of corrupt people. In fact, the Bible said their God is their belly. What they can eat in, they are looking for money. So they go about speaking corrupt things, giving corrupt prophecies. All for money. And they have demonic power to discover how much money you have. Some of them know how to even check out from the banks to know how much you have. Because they have their representatives there. How much a big man has. And then they will prepare a, prop, a, a, a very beautiful prophecy for that big man. The Lord has revealed to us that you are going to be the next president of Nigeria. That in the, in the next election, the Lord wants to bring you up. So, but you must surprise the Lord by putting in the sum of 10 million. They know what he has. They have studied him. I'm talking about his money. Uh, his money. Since you came here, have we collected money from your hands? No, we didn't bring you here for money. We didn't bring you half. We should pity you, your little children. Although you will give offering to your God according to your, your liking, according to your strength, but it is not where our mind is. Your, our mind is get you for heaven. Get 
you delivered from Satan and put the truth into your life that you should be different from generation of vipers. You should be true men. That's our mind. So, but these people corrupt with money. What other thing? What other thing? Demon inspiration. Corrupt preachers. They are going by demons now. They go to Ghana. They go and sleep in the sea. They go to Ijebode. They go to other places. They go outside the country. They go, they cross over to India. They go and gather it there. Demonic people. And come to be spreading demons. Look at it in the book of First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 1 and verse 2. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. I'm telling you this thing. It, they perform every miracle by demon. 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 The Lord gave revelation concerning the ministry of one particular pastor who is still going up and down now. He came to he went to a country and was saying that yeah I, God is a merciful God and you will have money the law will give you money so watch it I'm going to pray for you money will enter into your pocket or else into your bag into your into your purse or you will receive a lot from the bank or apart from the arrange arrangement business that our sister testified of there are demons also that minister to them. So, now as he was praying, as he was praying, and people were shouting, Yeah, I've received money! And they counted money, Yes, I've received money! Yes, I received money! Sister Linda was among them, looking for money too. Came with her back. Because, in fact, he asked the younger sister that my back is not enough. They said, God will be sharing money. My bag is carry your bag. Finda said, This is a foolish business. They said, If you don't carry your bag, you will leave this house. They said, God said, It's sharing money, you know, we don't have. So Finda just to mock her, carry back a lot. They were going to collect money from a preacher. Then, while the preacher was speaking, it's a Nigerian preacher. While he was talking and saying, Oh, yes, money is coming up. God release the money. God release the money. People were shouting, hey, I've gotten it, hey, I've gotten it, hey, I've gotten it. And she was, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, I'm here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But that God disappointed her. She didn't get anything. And the man of God said, the program has finished. She started crying. God, you know, you know me. You know we don't have food in the house. Why did you treat me like this? God has a better plan for your life. So it was in her divine revelation. When God had, uh, had spoken to her in, in heaven, and now the Lord said, come, I will show you a message I shot you. The Lord brought back that crusade, having that Nigerian preacher, and said, watch in this crusade. That, do you see yourself there? She saw herself in the video. Okay, watch the next thing. So when the preacher came up, yes, God is sending money. God is sending money. Receive. Demons were literally dropping money in selected people with their tail walk, waxing behind them. Literally. He said, can you see? These people that are collecting the money is the, will be going for the sacrifice of this preacher this year. If I don't intervene, they are gone. Because the money is for their soul. It's the money Satan is buying their soul. And the preacher is still going up and down. I'm talking to you corrupt people. Demon possessed. Demon possessed. They go to put something in their hands. Put something in their tongue. Put something in their eyes. And they're seeing. Yes, I'm seeing a lady here. Uh, I'm seeing a man there. Oh, I'm seeing. And people say, yeah, yeah. You don't know that you're fools clapping hands for fools like you. God didn't send them. God didn't send them. They're the one bringing darkness upon the world. 
they're the ones clearing away the image of God from your hearts so that you can believe in the Lord. So that's what the Bible is saying. But God loves you. Say again, God loves me. Say, God loves me. Say the third time, God loves me. I am hearing the truth today. My eyes have opened today. Thank God for this conference. Now, what are these false preaching? These preachers preach among the people. What are these false doctrines? They include the following. There is no hellfire. Just to remove fear from you so that you can sing along with them very freely. If they want to commit immorality with you, free. If they want to uh, send you, train you to do evil, you won't have any disturbance in your mind. No hellfire. But what's, what does the scripture say? Look at the Bible in Matthew chapter 25 verse 41 Matthew chapter 25 verse 41 then shall he say also unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels who is going to say to these wicked people God who is the Lord Jesus himself he shall say to them get out from me here wicked people I prepared hell fire for Satan and his angels you will go and join them and these preachers are telling you there's no hell don't listen to them Mark chapter 9 from verse 43 to 48 and if thine hand offend thee cut it off it is better for thee to enter into life into heaven meant than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where their womb dieth not and the fire is not quenched just stop there who told you that it is not there he said god is saying it that i created hell and it's a regret is 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 a it's a regrettable place you will regret to be there the fire doesn't quench over your life wombs will torture you in hell so who told you that there's no hell look chapter 16 Luke chapter 16 verse 22 to verse 31 and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And said Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and thou art tormented it's a place of torment this is a life story and they said according to historian this event actually happened the poor man is called Lazarus the rich man's name was Davis it's a practical event Jesus was speaking it Jesus taught it it happened he knew it is the god that condemns so how will you how would they be deceiving you so that you can commit sin freely witchcraft pastors in witchcraft occultic powers occultic forces are deceiving you through through satan that there's no hell so that you can kill as much as you want some of you satan has said kill i will reward you after you're dead 
He is the father of lies. The after death, Satan has no power unto any man, for it is appointed unto man once to after death the judgment. And that judgment is not coming from Satan. It's coming from God because even Satan himself is under divine judgment. So that is what we need to know. There's hell. Again, what are they saying? Unitarian God. They say they don't, there's no, God is not three persons in one. He is just one person. Jesus is the Father. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. That's also false doctrine. Why? Wow. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 5 verse 7. 1 John chapter 5, I read verse 7. It, it tells us saying, For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Three separate persons form one God. One person is just one person. Look at it in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man. Can you see it now? Can you see it now? And God said, let us make man. Is it one person talking or a, so a group of people talking together? Three, there are three. The Bible says those, the people talking here, which is God, is three persons. That's why he's using the word we. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And then in verse 27, so God, the three separate in one person. So, God created man in his image to tell you that it's a perfect unity. There are three separate persons, but it's perfect unity. Three separate persons is one person actually. But you will see them in three clear, distinct personality. So, God created man in his singular verb, meaning it's one person actually. Let us, plural verb, three separate persons, in his one person, singular verb, God is three in one. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Meaning, identify the, the, the served person to each of the separate persons in the Godhead but it's one person actually each of the separate persons in the Godhead but remember he said I want you to read verse 26 with me one two go and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth thank you now I want you to note something in late us in our image after our likeness what is his likeness three separate person let us make man just as we are three separate persons in one person in the book of first thessalonians chapter five first thessalonians i read chapter five verse 23 the bible tells us here saying and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pray God, your whole what? 
spirit number two soul number three body in our image in our image you see the cameraman there do you see him how many people are standing there in the holding the camera there actually it's three persons because you are seeing the body and that inside him is the soul inside the soul is the spirit three different personalities but it's one person that's how god is you can't separate him none is better than the other if something hurts the body now is no more existent if the spirit leaves the body now it's no more existent if the soul vanishes, it's no more existent so it's one perfect person that makes one god but there are three different personalities he is one man but in three separate persons jesus is different the holy spirit is different the father is different you will see three persons but they are one person actually give a clap offering to jesus that's the word of god amen so this religion that says we don't we don't believe in jesus we don't accept him they are saying they don't believe in god the creator because jesus is god the creator in the beginning was jesus jesus was with god and jesus was god he was in the beginning with god and all things were created by him without him nothing was created that was created what, what does that mean in the beginning was jesus jesus was with the father and the holy spirit and jesus is one together with them through jesus all things were created without jesus nothing was created on its own in the world but you say what about the father you are talking about the same the same person philip have you seen me and have you not seen the father verily i say unto you he that has seen me has seen the father also one person you're sleeping here and your soul is somewhere in a dream or oh, these witches and wizards you are their body is lying down but their soul is attending meeting and that soul has spirit inside it's attending meeting somewhere whatever strikes him there if the body here might die That's to, because it's one person so god is one and the bible says when jesus was going through baptism he was in the water as a man to be baptized, coming out of water and then the holy spirit descending looking like but they, because he is spirit uh, john saw something like a dove but he's a spirit coming down upon him but the voice of the father spoke in heaven this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hallelujah again the these false preachers talk about water baptism that water baptism should be done in the name of jesus only but look at this instruction matthew the book of matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20 scripture says and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world and laid student learners say Amen. let the christian students say Amen. let those who are in horemon youth international conference say Amen. who said this jesus what formula did he do did he give baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son 
and of the Holy Ghost. What does it mean by baptism? It means burial. Burying the person. How many times do you bury a person who has died? Answer me. We were dead and buried with Christ and we resurrect a new person. So baptism is immersing somebody in water in the name of the, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Now, did Jesus practice water baptism before this statement was given? Yes. Himself and his disciples were baptizing. What formula was he using then? He might have been this formula. That's why he's giving it to us now. Because they were baptizing at that time. Before his arrest and death. They, because John heard that the, that man that you spoke to us about is baptizing many people and people are coming to him. John said, I told you that I am not he. He that has the bride is the bridegroom. I am just a friend of the bridegroom. And the friend of the bridegroom rejoiced at the voice of the bridegroom. He must increase, but I must decrease. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus was baptizing. He could be using this formula. Now, see what Jesus now said concerning the Holy Spirit that should come. In John chapter 16, verse 12 to 15. I have yet many things to say unto you. But ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He, will, he shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father had are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. I am going that the Holy Spirit will come. But Holy Spirit will not come and speak a, a word different from every word I have said. Because forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And God is not a confusionist. It is Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one and the Father, they are one, is one person. How will he change? God is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he shall tell lies. Has he spoken it and will he change his word on what condition? So the word spoken that registered in heaven is that you go baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit that's what jesus said then they found in acts of apostles that the people baptized in the name of jesus only and they did it they had unlearned men unstable men sponsored by the devil to bring confusion to the church of christ people who are children of their fathers after the tradition of men after the ignorance of ignorance of men they begin to teach other things to bring confusion to christianity and god says this my holy youths that i am bringing up i will never allow confusion in their way yeah. now in the book of acts of apostles we read chapter 19 acts of apostles chapter 19 and i read from verse 1 and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper course, came to Ephesus, and finding certain men, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost, since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Ah, uh -uh. you have never heard about Holy Spirit? All the Pentecostal experience. You mean, you have not known anything about Jesus? Then he asks, verse 3, And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. They, you see, they call it John's baptism. But John had a formula. Whatever formula, we do not know. But whatever, it was John's baptism. And that is separated from Jesus' 
baptism. Can you get it? John's baptism. We have not known anything about Jesus yet. Oh, you don't know anything about Jesus yet. All the baptism you have is just of John. Oh, okay, verse 4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they had this, what happened? They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To differentiate it from John's baptism. There was still another third baptism, as we understood, or understand, it is the baptism of the Pharisees. Whenever a Gentile was converted to become a Jewish Hellenist, Jewish convert, they passed him through bapt water baptism. And it is the baptism of the Pharisees. So there were three baptisms. The baptism of the Pharisees existed before John's baptism. The one that came after the baptism of the Pharisees is the baptism of John, who baptized people to repentance. At that time, Jesus had not yet become prominent. And then the third water baptism is the baptism in the name, the baptism of Jesus, which is baptism by the, by the instruction of Jesus, baptism by the ordering of Jesus. Baptism by the formula of Jesus. And the formula of Jesus, give it to me, number one. Baptizing them in the name and of and of the, the way is confusion now. Where is the confusion from? Jesus had told you that the, the Holy Ghost will not change his world. What, who, what happened between Jesus' statement? And the coming of the Holy Ghost, which was just 40 days. What, what change came? Can they prove to any scripture that changed this formula to baptize them in the name of Jesus only? Satan. Wanting to lead people to hell. Using ignorant men, unlearned men, sinners. Proud people. Using intellectuals of this world who go and found Bible colleges to wrest the, ki the kingdom of God. Bible colleges have no meaning. I'm not saying all Bible colleges have no meaning, but their own doesn't have meaning. It's just to rest people. So, right formula of water baptism is in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It is one immersion into the body of water. Then, number four, speaking in tongues is not for today and neither is it for all men. This is a false doctrine. And it keeps people from seeking God genuinely for baptism in the Holy Ghost. It keeps people, even when people are receiving, instead of exercising faith, they say, I ah, know it's not everybody that will receive. By the way, it's not everybody that should speak in tongues. They have deceived you and are depriving you of the beauty of Christianity. They have deceived you. See about the word of God. What see the word of God? Look at of Mark chapter 16 verse 17 mark chapter 16 verse 17 the bible says and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name what shall happen they shall cast out devils again they shall speak with new tongues why? Because the Holy Ghost shall come for all those that believe. All of them. Those who hold to the name of Jesus are entitled to baptism in the Holy Spirit. And the evidence that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Acts of Apostles. We read chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 4 the bible says and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled 
all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were what all filled with the holy ghost how do we know and began to speak with speak with tongues other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance each of them the holy spirit sat on each of them each of them spoke in tongues for they were all were with God that the lost children were prophets and he would put his spirit on all of them the mind of God is to fill you with the Holy Ghost it gives you power to serve him better and somebody else is telling you no it is not for everybody that's not true somebody else is telling you I know you cannot speak in tongues who told them just liars people who don't know anything following tradition tradition of their fathers some churches want to hear somebody speaking in tongues stop it stop it stop it you are stopping speaking in tongues and you think you're doing God a service you don't know that you're hindering revival the Bible says quench not the spirit now we talk about number five they say genuine Christians cannot be holy in this world until after death that's what they're saying you learn it you grew up the Lord told me he said my son these your people don't believe that a Christian can be holy they don't even believe that you are holy my son that's why nobody is contending for holiness nobody is struggling nobody is pleading nobody you're not pleading but thank God he still said there are a few among them that have, have come up they have understood I wish you are one of them that God is saying you have so far understood that with the meaning of holiness and you have even attained to it thank God for those people yes look at it in the book of Luke chapter 1 I read verse 74 and 75 the Bible tells us here saying Luke 1 74 and 75 that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life can you see all the days not that you'll be rising and falling rising and falling i mean falling and rising falling and rising. no that you will be steadfast all the days of your life in righteousness and holiness this was provided in christ according to ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 to 27 husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish god wants you to have no spot in your life be ye perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect paul the apostle said ye are witnesses and god also how holily and justly we behave ourselves so holiness is attainable aim at it desire it pray for it practice it yes believe it it shall be yours and you will live this wonderful holy life in jesus name number six they say believers have eternal security that once a person is saved he will ever remain saved 
they look at a Christian, a child of God, in the sense of human child of God, a human being given birth to a child. They see it like that. I told you they are unlearned men who don't know divine, divine principles. They feel, they say, if a man gives birth to a child and the child becomes a thief later, does he cease to be the child of the man? That's what they're asking. If a man gives birth to a child and the child became a wizard after, does he cease to be a child of the man? Will he not come home if he dies? Will they not bring his corpse to the man's house? Because that is his father's house. So in the same way, even when you are born again, you will remain a child of God. Even when you fail, you will now become a sinner, you become a thief, you become a robber, you become a whatever. If you die, you will be taken to God in heaven. That's their mentality. They fail to know that our sonship with God is that of adoption. Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. We are not begotten of God. We are adopted. The original son that you can apply that formula to, although he was not a sinner, is Jesus who has been with the father from the beginning of course he's, and the father sent him to the world is as he came in he is a son he is a son only begotten of the father the father has never gotten anybody like that Adam was called the son of God but not only begotten no we are adopted we were not children because of our wayward life because of our evil life we were not children of god the bible tells us when a person actually becomes a child of god in john chapter one john chapter one from verse 10 to verse 13 john 1 verse 10 to verse 13 the bible says he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We were not children. We were children of Satan. Yea, of your father the devil. We were children of Satan. It was when we believed in Jesus that the father for Jesus' sake adopted us to become his children since we love his son he adopted us to become his children so it is adoption and that is because of his son if you see his moving with his son he he will never take you to his house anymore the condition of adoption is that you believe in jesus you are living a righteous life the righteousness jesus brought if you stop it he stops your membership in that family look at it in the book of ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 and verse 12 ezekiel 33 verse 11 and verse 12 the bible speaks to us here about this matter very clearly that if we do iniquity god will forget relationship with you ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 say unto them as i live see the lord god i have no pleasure in the day of the wicked but that the wicked turn from his way and leave turn ye Turn ye from your evil ways, for when will ye die, O house of Israel? Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, 
the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression as for the wickedness of the wicked he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness neither shall the righteous live for his righteousness in the day that he sinned when i shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trusts in his own righteousness and commit iniquity all his righteousnesses shall not be remembered but for his iniquity that he had committed he shall die for it don't allow anybody deceive you so that you can't live a consistent christian life they say, nah, yeah, no, what, your name is in the book of life. Who told you? The Bible said, them that I sin will I blot out their names from my book. Them that sin, I will blot out their names. Your name has left that place because you went back to sin. Your name is no more there because you are still in sin. You have not recovered back to God. So that is scripture. Therefore, don't allow them to deceive you. Don't allow these preachers, you women, to deceive you and then make you concubines in their church. And she say, no, uh, you are going to heaven. No, all of us are going together. It's a lie. Then, number seven, all churches are of God. You can attend anyone. Uh, uh, who told you? Who told you that you can go to the all conferences, all churches, and, and be free? Listen to what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to verse 17. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to verse 17. The Bible tells us here saying, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Some preachers are corrupt. They, their fruit, their members are corrupt. Their members are evil. Their members are wearing trousers. Their members are wearing earrings. Their members are pubbing their hair. Their members put on wood looking like mad people. Their members, I'm telling you. Will you go there and become foolish? And become evil? Because you will reflect your master. A servant, it's sufficient that a servant should be like his master. You will become like them. Therefore, it's not every church you should go to. It's not every water you should drink. Some water is dirty. Some poisonous. It's not every fruit you should eat. Some fruit are poisonous. Others, beautiful and good for food. So, check up where, which church you identify yourself with. Check up the life of that preacher. The preacher palm, palm his hair. He's a man. Jerichoiled. And he, and he said, the Holy Ghost spoke to me this morning. Who's Holy Ghost? Are you believing the Holy Ghost? He's bringing all these false prophecies to you. Are you accepting it? Leave that place. The Bible says, flee also youthful loss, but follow righteousness, faith, peace, and charity with them that call upon the Lord out of a pure heart if you want to make it to heaven yes then number eight they, they, they say there are no miracles today but the bible says this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall lay hands upon the sick and the sick shall recover does it work up to today jesus the same yesterday today and forever the miracles are working the gifts of the holy spirit are working to today again number nine they say revelation experiences and prophecies should be rejected that they are from demon that you should not receive the messages you know when the lord gave message to uh, sister linda churches announced is because he's exposing them it's exposing them. They that live in darkness hate the light. 
lest their deeds be exposed that they are evil. That's why they fought. But see them now. Come for miracle. Come for miracle. Some will even tell you that did they don't they don't do miracle in holiness revival movement. Yes, we don't do their miracles here because we're not like them. We're not fake people. We are original. Everybody say we are original. Say it again. What has the wheat to do with the ties? The miracles the Lord does here is original miracle. Check in your bodies already. It's only there's not it's no time. All the prayers we have prayed for you here, miracles have taken place in your life. Oh, maybe you need you who receive definite miracle here. You need to wave your hands so that they should know that. Be, although we're not announcing it, they, 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 they should not think that miracles are not here. Just wave those hands. Okay, people, quickly stand up. Let them know that the power of miracles are here. The God of miracles are here. Wave those hands. I say you should stand up. Wave those hands to say, oh, okay, you can see crowd. The Lord has touched them in one way or the other. The God of miracles is doing it. We didn't fake it. We prayed and he had our prayers. And he would do greater things than that. Sit down, my brethren. Miracles are here. Miracles are here. So they reject these prophecies. And but Jesus said something. There are yet many things I have to say. But when the Spirit is calm, He will lead you to all truth. Because He shall receive of mine. The Holy Ghost is the one doing this thing in the churches today. The Holy Spirit is the one giving these revelations to people, taking them to hell, taking them to heaven, and bringing them back again so that the people can see the truth and know the, and know the truth and go by the truth. Look at it in the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 24. Here the Lord gives us a prophecy in scripture that people shall be going to hell and see it and come back and tell us. Look at it in verse 24 of Isaiah 66. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their wombs shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring to all flesh. That's the scripture. They're telling you, hey, Nicodem, Lazarus died. He didn't come back with a message. They shall go forth and see them. The carcasses. Bodies of people. That have transgressed against God. And they shall see the wombs over them. And they shall come and tell the story. And people shall lose them. Say, hey. That's what God says here. So what happened to these people? It's because their deeds are evil. They are wicked. And they, are, they don't want the truth. They are damn many people. God, a, a master, soul winner, all wise God, sent, people, sent messengers of salvation. And you stopped your members. And some of these members take their pastors. That they are gods. You are worshipping idols. Don't worship any person here in this holiness movement. For we are not the ones. We are not projecting ourselves. Whatever you see here. Whatever we teach. Whatever wisdom it comes from him. Give him the glory. I say give him the glory. I say give him the glory. Don't give the glory to man. Don't give the glory to man. That is what we are saying here. That's what we are teaching in this place. Yes. But some count their pastors. Their bishops. Their superintendents. Their overseers. They have senior pastors, whatever you call them. They call, they count them as gods. My pastor said we should not watch it. My pastor said we should not listen to this CD. My pastor said we should set them, we should buy, bond them. You will cry in hell and call the name of your pastor forever. Because you chose man rather than Jesus. Who did this? Did you prove it in scripture? Did your pastor prove it in scripture? Did he, is he diligent to read this portion of scripture or rest interpretation for your damnation and damning people in the world what how many souls have they taken to heaven that they're blocking the rest what work have they done in this great work of seven world of seven billion people that they feel that they can pro, they can keep the rest that let no people come to heaven anymore and by damning it what ministry do they have how many people do they have under them that they think that the rest of the people can perish that god cannot do things as he wants 
he that winneth souls is wise they want to prevent god in his wisdom they will suffer for it that's the word of god the bible tells us despise not prophesying why are you rejecting prophecy why wow. prove it prove it test all things to know whether it be of god because god too can give prophecy god too can give revelation knowledge you call it false prophet there can be no false until there is true there must first be true before false comes is that not so there must first be original before the fake one will come that is how life is then there is the original where is the original you all you only know fake your church is always calling everything fake where is the original original will be there again number 10 they say those to go to heaven and to hell fire have been predestined from the beginning that if you are not among those to go to heaven however you try even the righteous life you are living now you will still fall away tomorrow hi satan hey they want to say god is a deceiver that you should not trust in god that he will he will disappoint you that's what they're telling you that if you are for hellfire that the reason why you have not repented now is because you are going to hell and that there's nothing you can do to stop yourself from going to hell that you should continue your sin if you are for heaven towards your dying time you will repent how many of you have had this type of foul doctrine you have heard it. You have listened to people say it. Wave that hand. Let me see. Yes. They are preaching it. Wicked preachers. Said Satan inspired. See, in Ezekiel chapter 18, God laments over that type of thing. Ezekiel chapter 18. The Bible tells us there against this evil in verse 21 to 32 it says but if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he had committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right he shall surely live he shall not die all his transgressions which he had committed they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he had done he shall live have i any pleasure at all that the wicked should die said the lord and not that he should return from his ways and live where are these people accusing me do i have any desire that any person a sinner should die in sin am i not laboring that they should repent of their sins and come to salvation where they are accusing me saying i have destined some people for wicked for death in hellfire why are they saying that i created them for death in hellfire a reasonable father can he give a serpent to a child that asks for fish or a stone for a child that asks for bread a reasonable father can he now give birth to children and say you are, you will live you are will kill and he's, he's in his senses where are they accusing me of that that's what god is lamenting over those wicked people that are accusing god yes they are accusing him that his ways are not equal look at it again as he as, as he said it in verse 23 half um, in verse 24 but when the righteous turn it away from his righteousness and committed iniquity and do it according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth shall he leave all his righteousness that he had done shall not be mentioned in the trespass that he had trespassed and in his sin that he had sinned so to in them shall he die yet ye say the way of the lord is not equal hear now O house of israel is not my way equal and not your ways unequal can you say because the man has 
believed in me and, uh, and has served me and has done this, done this in my name. I even took him to heaven. I took him to hellfire and gave him revelations. And now he has rejected me. He's no more following me. Has gone to meet with sin, sinners, sinful preachers. And has gone now and is preaching hell, preaching heresies, preaching wickedness. He's not practicing righteousness anymore. That I, I should still take him to heaven. I should come. Are you in your senses? Is heaven a place for sinners? I'm not my ways equal. Was I responsible for his fall? Was I the one that pushed me away from my kingdom? Was I the one that denied him privilege in my kingdom? Was he not the one that said he didn't want me again and went about abusing me, abusing everywhere, and corrupting everywhere? You said I should still take him to heaven because he at once done me. Your ways are not equal. My ways are equal. That's what God is saying here. Again, they say God has no concern with outside dressing of the body, but that it is the righteousness of the heart. That's what they're saying. That God does not bother. Whatever you dress, whichever way you look like, God doesn't bother. That all that God wants is have a perfect heart. Now, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 7, Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10 the bible tells us here proverbs chapter 7 verse 10 it says in the twilight in the evening in the okay that's verse 9 in the black and dark night and behold there met him a woman with the attire of an hallowed and subtle of heart I want you to take note of this. These preachers are evil. Do you know that your external appearance affects your, in, your inside heart? This woman was dressed in the dressing of a harlot. And her heart was subtle, the nature of Satan. That's it. The two go together. The outside shows the inside. The outside affects the inside. The heart is polluted. That's why it shows in the outside. The outside is polluted. It hinders the inside to be clean. She was in the dressing of a harlot, And her heart inside was wicked. Who told you that these people, these women who wore trousers, who wear trousers or pants, you call them. Who told you that they're righteous? They are never righteous. Not one of them will enter heaven. Not one has ever entered it. Not one has gone there. Oh, but she can prophesy. Yes, yeah, since there's nobody to prophesy. Even the old prophet prophesied. So let God allow her prophesy. And it comes to pass. She can say something. But that lady is nice in behavior. You have not come across a, pro a true Muslim. They're very nice. But they're not going to heaven. Because that nice is in one area. 50% niceness. Go to the backside of a, a, a real Muslim. When he does his Allah, you, you must run. I'm telling you the truth. So don't be saying that that person is a, is a nice person. In fact, our pastor, is there pastries too? Our pastor is a nice woman. Palm her here. The heart is the heart of a tiger. No righteousness in the heart because the spirit that gives inside righteousness can never do it because she's not succumbed to the holiness of God in the outside. Cannot perfect her. You leave her at superficial level. That's what I'm telling you. So what the scripture says, remove, remove them. No single man that is wearing a wedding ring is a true Christian in the sense of holy Christian in the whole world. If you see any man, he can be born again, but not holy. He can be born again. In fact, he can be baptized in the Holy Spirit, but not holy Christian. Because that thing has hindered the Holy Spirit from entering inside and perfecting. That's truth about it. So know the truth and come to righteousness. Know the truth and come to perfection. And don't allow these people to deceive you. Again, the rapture, they say, the rapture shall take place after the great tribulation. You see, that's it. So, ah, you people who are thinking, we will get 666 every time, but 666 will come. They have started it in America. Don't leave those, leave those people alone. 
ignorant people. 666 shall not make believers on earth. The Antichrist shall not make believer, meet believers on earth. He will only meet backsliders. Oh, he, those sinners who shall be converted during the tribulation and become Christians, aha, they, they are the ones to face the Antichrist. But consistent holiness. The, the trumpet shall sound and take you up. Look at it in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, I read chapter 26, verse 19 to 21. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 19 to 21. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. It's resurrection time. Come, my, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, heaven, and shut thy doors about thee in the marriage supper, until, until the indignation be overpassed, the tribulation. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth in great tribulation for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. In that great, great tribulation. But before this time, come ye, my son, my children, enter into your chamber and take a rest there and let me be rewarding you and let's have a supper while judgment is going down upon the earth. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 18. The Bible tells us here saying, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus Christ died, and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You shall, you see, arise, ye that are in the dust and sing for joy. They are rising first. Dead in Christ. Yes. Dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Clear. His tribulation will now come behind us. Before the flood of Noah, the ark was made. And Noah and his, uh, his children were saved. They were saved before the water started pouring down. Before the fires of Sodom and Gomorrah began to pour down, Lord and his family were evacuated. Before the Antichrist shall be coming to the earth, the church of Christ, true believers, shall be living the earth. Praise the Lord! That's the word of God. They say tithes payment is not binding today. That you, you don't need to pay tithes. That you can uh, just give God whatever you want. Look at it in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. I read from verse 1 to 8 and then verse 17. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being by interpretation, king of righteousness. And after that, also king of Salem, which is king of peace that's the emblem of jesus christ 
without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abided a priest for continually. Abraham saw him. He didn't know where he was coming from, but he knew he, he understood every way that this is the priest of the Most High God. And he left Abraham wherever he was going. Abraham didn't know. So Abraham didn't know where he came from. When was he born? Or where? what ended with him? No beginning known to Abraham. No ending of that man known to Abraham. That was Melchizedek. And now the Bible is saying, now consider how great this man was. Unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tent of the spoils. Abraham paid tithes unto him. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a, a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren. Though they come out of the loins of Abraham, children of Abraham normally pay tithes to the priest, but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and, and blessed him, but and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here, even and here. Mean that die received tithes, but there he received them of whom it is witness that he liveth forever. So you can see a Melchizedek that we don't know how where he started, where he ended, so we don't know about his life, we don't have history of his beginning and his ending. Uh, without beginning, no, no record, no written history. Without ending, no written history. He abided like God, eternal God. And so, and this man, yet greater than Abraham. This man was greater than Abraham. The children of Abraham were in Abraham's bowels and they paid tithes. Whatever Abraham did, he, he did it for his children. And his children were copyright to pay tithes to Melchizedek. And now, see, your tithes were collected by, by according to the law by children of Levi but here a man who is not of the descent of Levi also collected tithes from Abraham the greater the great the father of the father of the children of Israel now the bible tells us what about Jesus verse 14 for it is evident that our lord sprang out of Judah of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. Tithes must be paid to him. There arises another priest, not of the order of Levi, who is made not after the law of carnal commandment but after the power of an endless life for he is testified thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek and if Melchizedek collected tithes even before the law from Abraham and showing his greater how much more he now that has come up as a priest after the order of Melchizedek he should be taking tithes from the children of Abraham. Children of Abraham must pay tithes to him. Therefore, now all tithes must be paid to our high priest, Jesus Christ. Who is our high priest? Pay tithes to him. Not to pay tithes to him shows you don't recognize him. Not, it shows you don't believe in God. Tithe payment is not a commandment of the law only. It existed before the law and transcends the law. It goes beyond the law. It existed before the law and it was not condemned. Restitution existed before the law and it was not stopped at the law. It continued. So tithe payment continued. Whom do we pay it to? Jesus Christ. He only is the high priest that we must pay tithes to. Now, they also teach that one can divorce his wife and marry another. But not what the Bible says. In Romans chapter 7, verse 10, Three, verse 2 and 3. Romans chapter 7, verse 2 and verse 3. For the woman whose heart and husband is bound by the law 
to her husband so long as he lived. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lived, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Once you get married, you say, hey, I married when I was 15 years old. That's marriage until you die. You can't marry another or oh, until that man dies. You can't marry another. All this one that you do because of sexual feeling, you sleep with a woman, she is pregnant. Okay, come inside. Oh, come in. Just come in. And after a little while, when all those sexual, sexual feelings vanish, you say, why are you here? Uh, who brought you to this place? Away! You are living. That's the end. The two of you must never marry again until one of you dies. That's it. That's it. Uh, but they say, except it be for fornication. Yes. The Bible says so. That if a man puts away his wife, except it be for fornication, he causes her to commit adultery. For fornication is a sin committed by an unmarried person. You are a single person. Woman, man, you have never married before. And now you thought you have married, you have married a woman. And now you really rejoice you have married a woman. And you started meeting with her. But you came to discover that she's another man's wife. She is committing adultery. But you, what are you committing? Fornication, because you are not married before. Although sometimes both can be considered adultery. But you're committing fornication. That's not your wife. You're committing fornication. That's not your husband. Separate from that marriage. Only on this condition. Otherwise, to do separate from a man and marry another. He has not finished paying my dowry. But he started. Did he start? Many people have bought cars and they have not finished paying. But it's their car. So, be careful. Take the teachings well. And marry well. Don't allow your flesh to push you into three months marriage. One year marriage. Five years marriage. Ten years marriage. Fifteen years marriage. And the race for to five, fifty years. You stay in a life of idleness. And become a market for everybody to come in and buy. I pray the Lord will change your life. The Lord will have mercy upon your life. This wickedness will not come to you in Jesus' name. Now, finally, they are saying true and holy Christians cannot be sick or afflicted. That's a false doctrine. False. The Bible tells us in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 25 to 27. Philippians chapter 2 verse 25 to 27 it says yet i suppose it necessary to send to you epaphroditus my brother and companion in labor and my fellow soldier but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants for he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick for indeed he was sick near unto death. But God had mercy on me, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Can you see that? Not on him only, but on me too. He was very sick, almost to die. Believers can be sick. So let them not make, me, to make you proud and give you hyper faith. Instead of facing righteousness and holiness, you are busy coming scriptures. I shall not die. I shall live. I will not be sick. I shall. Be. Yes, good confession, but follow it with righteousness. And make sure wisdom is also there. And the Holy Spirit is giving you witness. So keep on confessing that. It shall happen. But if you do it after the carnal thing that they're doing in these churches, you will die. I'm telling you, you will die. I say again, you will die. It's like some, th I say three, three girls, 
that came by river of water and they said in the name of Jesus Elisha cross we will cross in the name of Jesus so they held their hands and they began to enter the water in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of water carried in the name of Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah because the Bible tells us in the book of Psalm, because it's ministering pride to you, instead of being humble, so I'm be seeking for help. You are proud and say, no, I can't tell them that I'm sick. No, no, no. I, I, evangelists like myself now. How can evangelists like this be sick? In the book of Psalm 34, I read verse 19. Now, if you are there in Psalm 34, we shouted so that your heart should wake up. Your heart should wake up. Your heart should wake up. Yes, verse 19. One, two, go. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Afflictions can come from satanic attack. Afflictions can come from sickness and pain. Afflictions in which persecutions. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him out of them all. In 2 Kings chapter 13. 2 Kings. I read chapter 13 verse 14. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness whereof he died and Jewish the king of Israel came down unto him and wept over his face he became sick and died in the sickness brother in case you become sick it's possible the sickness can take your life know this thing so that you should be humble and search yourself over and over over and over so that you don't just say no i will not die i will live i will you lie down there i shall not die i shall leave. better check yourself because if it is the time to go god will not be listening to that thing you're saying check up yourself humble yourself search yourself seek forgiveness do your restitution and prepare in case you're going you go well if you see somebody say you'll be praying for the person he may not recover maybe it's the sickness that will take him so prepare him in both sides prepare him on faith to be healed prepare him also in case he has to go right knowledge and finally they say hey no you don't need medicine believers don't need medicine you don't need to take drugs and some people will come up and say, by the grace of God, for the past 15 years, paracetamol has never entered my mouth. And some of them are telling lies. You'll be believing in lies, anchoring your faith in lies. But some people really have bo good body, eat well. Even sinners, they don't get sick. No, it's not really because of faith. Yet, you can trust God and he will sustain you truly. That's right. But it doesn't mean you should, if you are sick, don't take medicine. This thing we are revealing to you, I wish they taught me when I was younger. Because some damages will be coming to your life. And instead of running to see for medical assistance, they said, no, uh, bro, why are you in the hospital? I just came to see somebody here. I just came to pray for somebody. <laughs> I came to pray for somebody. Uh, it's not myself. No, I can't be here. No, I can't be here. You have turned in the gospel to pride. The Bible says it's the, the sick people that need physician. That's Jesus saying it. The word of God do it good like medicine. Which means medicine do it good. Dr. Luke was going along with Paul. He called him Luke, the beloved physician. Yes, yeah, Luke, the beloved physician. Why was he going along with Paul? Was he not ministering to Paul? Why did Paul have to tell Timothy, take no longer water, but take a little wine for your often stomach infirmity? What about that? That you're sick. They want to take you to hospital. He said, no. Oh, you belong to some of these churches. We don't take medicine. It's a lie. Hypocrisy. They build hypocrites among themselves. The people sneak behind and take. 
the elders will go and take and do like that and do like that. And no, no, we don't take medicine. And we don't take medicine. We hope poor Chris going to hell. No, the truth. No, the truth. No, the truth. No, the truth. Rise up upon your feet and thank the Lord for truth. The word of God is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Open your mouth and thank the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805- 683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my
you purchased me with your blood you are my lord and my savior you left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin I believe in you, you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. Oh, oh, oh. you are the living Savior. I believe in you, you are my Lord and Savior, I believe in you, you are the living Savior, you can Chased me with your blood, you are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin.
I believe, I believe, I believe. 